They had maids. They had good life. Every year his wife had a different car, different horse, whatever it was back then, right? She went on vacation twice a week. Hmm? Twice a week. That's for you twice a year, Habibki. And your husband takes you twice a year. That's for you. Twice a week. The rest of the year you're driving life. The rest of the year she's driving life. <laughs> okay, so, so what happened here? So the man said to me, why would God do this to him? The man took care of his family. Really? Is that how it works? No. He couldn't take care of a poor man. And you know what was amazing about it? The poor man was sitting right by his door 24-7. He was sitting by his gate. That poor man is in our life. That poor man is on the other side of the phone. That poor man is in our work. That poor man is on our street. That poor man is our neighbor. That poor man is always everywhere. His name is Lazarus. It means the grace of God. The mercy of God. The mercy of God is everywhere. But are we going to have mercy on Him? Like God? So, when we have mercy on others, God will have mercy on us. If the rich man, all what he had to do, just come out and give this man some food, all his sins would have been washed out. Simple as that. He didn't want to even look at the poor man. So, Ozengi labi lechazer domskina. Yes, he had good deeds for his family. But he didn't have good deeds so people can see Jesus in him. So you might have good deeds for your family. But Jesus did not come for his family. Jesus came for the stranger. He came for the ones that didn't know him. He came for the sinners. He didn't come for the righteous people. So, how would you know someone's deeds if they don't show Jesus to others? If they don't act like Jesus did to us? If Jesus did what he did for you, what are you doing for others? What are our fruits? The only way we're going to know our deeds, it comes through faith. Because in faith, there is no question about deeds anymore. When you have faith, you will do with no conditions. Faith brings love, the true love, which is God. I am not going to do this for you because of this and this. I'm going to do this for you because of the love that's in me. That was, that, that was created by the faith that's in me. See? So faith creates love. And love is unconditional. And when you love unconditionally, that means it's not your family. The only reason you love your family because they're from your blood, from your soul, from your body, from your flesh. But God doesn't want that. That is something you have to do. That's a must. That whether you have it or you don't have it, you have to take care of it. Even a bird does that. Even a dog does that. Even an animal does that. But we are different. We have to have unconditional love. And that comes through faith. The unconditional love comes through faith. And that's the only way to know the way is by faith. Are we late? No, not yet. Okay. Second Corinthians 5, 7. It's very simple. Show me. Yeah. Well, we look by faith, no? It doesn't show me I'm going to show me on the animal. Okay? So go ahead. Show me. For we live by faith, not by sight. We live by what? Faith, not by sight. 
شم شمیر ماي لما ربيت سورة بيقرنتاي خمسة شوا خمسة شوا عندهم بسبارة بسبارة ماي ها خمسة شوا ماي لما ربيت لا 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 ولا بي زيتا That's it يخيخ بيها مانوتا ولا بي What does that mean? We live by faith but not by Why? Why? Because Jesus said to Thomas مريم النخي Jesus said to Thomas what? He said Now you believe Thomas after you saw You believe by sight Blessed are those who believe without seeing. لا طول دانيته منه لحظة. تمام؟ So when we become Christ-like, it's not me who is living anymore. It's Christ who is living in me. And if Christ is living in me, what happens? Everything I do, I either do it against Christ or for Christ. You swear, you swear at Christ. You do a good deed, you bring glory to Christ. You steal, you steal from Christ. You commit adultery, you commit adultery against Christ. No longer against yourself. It used to be against yourself when you were in slavery. But once, Once you live in faith, you no longer yourself, you belong to Jesus Christ. Everything you do, you do it against Jesus Christ. And what happens when you do? You either put the nails in his hat or you whip him. And it's, it's happening 24-7. Do we whip him? Yes. Do we crucify him again? Yes. Do we put nails in his hands? Yes. Do we put thorns on his head? Yes. By our actions. That's why, because we live by faith, we can't do things worldly anymore. What the world does, we can't copy the world. Because if I cheat on my wife, she can't save me anymore. I'm not saved anymore. I can't. Once you're saved, you're not always saved. So before, if I cheated, I cheated on my wife. But now when I'm cheating, I'm cheating on my Lord. And what did Joseph say? How can I sin against my God? Against my God. When a woman wanted to commit an adultery with him. He didn't say, how am I going to... I'm going to sin against your husband, my master. He said, I'm going to sin against my God. So once you have Jesus in you, you sin against the Lord. You can't sin against nobody. Why? Because you are purchased by his blood. You belong to him. We just saw that. You are stained by his blood. So from now on, you sin against him directly. You deal with him. You can't sin against your husband anymore. You can't. Your husband won't be able to save you anymore. It's done. You're married to Jesus now. You belong to him. You can't steal from your friend anymore. You're stealing from Jesus. You can't swear at your friend. You can't swear in the street at somebody. You're swearing at Jesus. Simple as that. Whatever sin you're committing, you're committing it against Jesus. Whether in anger, whether you're, you're doing it willingly, that's why it says, 
If you commit a sin willingly, willingly, if you commit a sin, Hebrew 10, 26, 27. If you commit a sin willingly, there is no more sacrifice for you to be saved with. But it's waiting for you a fire in place. Because you become the enemy of God. If you sin willingly after you accept the life of Jesus Christ. There is no more sacrifice to save you. But it's waiting for you. A fiery place. Because you are now an enemy of God. So once you were a son, a daughter, a friend, but now, because you did it willingly. I was willing to do it after I was living in the faith. Repentance is once, and you get saved once. No one in the Bible ever committed the same sin twice. The woman that came to Jesus, he didn't say to her, okay, honey, I am sitting here. If you sin again, come back to me. No, he gave her an order. He said, do not sin again. <coughs> it was an order. Maryam and God bless you, brother. It was an order. Do not sin again. Go, now you're healed. Do not sin again. It's an order. Why? Because once Jesus touches you, there is no way back. You belong to him. When he touches your heart, you're done. But your fight is not over. Your fight is not over. Okay. Let's do John 6:68. Maryam and Nachay. John 6. Pop up. Go ahead. Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There you go. What happened in this picture, guys? Do you guys remember what happened here? When you told them to eat of flesh and blood. 500 apostles walked away from Jesus. Exactly. When he said, they said, how can we eat his body and his blood? We can't, how are you going to chew a body, right? And they walked away. God bless you, Lati. It was nice meeting you. We'll see you again. God be with you. Just done. How many is that? How many is that? God bless you. Okay, so what happened? John 6, 68. Helen, let me know. فأجابه سمعان بطرس يا رب إلى من نذهب وكلام الحياة الأبدية عندك. قد جبي نقرأ لك قرأ لك بينا قد Very well. So 500 apostles, 500 apostles walked away from Jesus. Because they said, how is it possible for a man to chew on man's body? Because he said, my, whoever doesn't eat my body will not have the kingdom or will not see the kingdom of God all would not have a part of me. So what happened? They walked away from him. And Jesus said, are you going to leave me too? Does really Jesus have to say that? No. Because Jesus knows what Peter will answer. 
It's always for the surrounding guys. Pay attention. God knows what you're going to answer. Does God have to ask you what you're going to answer? No. He knows what you're going to answer. Does he need to ask you? God said to Adam, where are you? Really? God said to Adam, where are you? No. He didn't say. He's trying to tell us, where are you in your sin? Where are you in your sin? Are you hiding from me? That's why he said to Adam, where are you? Not because God is saying to Adam, where are you? God knows where Adam is. God is the one that created. But he's trying to tell us, where are you in your sin? Are you wearing leaves? Are you hiding like Adam? Where are you? It's a question for us. Where are you? Ask yourself. God knows where you are. Do you know where you are? Are you hiding? Or are you walking with God? So, what is Peter saying? Petrus mo jubile. Mere mari eka az kisluhi na khabran al khaye. What does Jesus has? The words of what? Eternal life. And it's man So guys, think about it this way. The 500 that left, where are they going to find the words that Jesus had for them? Right? Mani ma se shawak lem shikha u azil ma can you leave Jesus? Really? That's what he's asking you today. Listen to me. Jesus is asking, are you going to leave me too? And then he said, where am I going to go? It's for us. Are we going to leave Jesus for something that we can understand? What of his saying? Or is it hard for us to understand a verse? How to explain? Zahmati la kadiyan khakiyay par miyikhlo hamzmat mshikha par miyikhlo ikhtawut alaha khabrant alaha wa rakhtinikh min maran? Is it possible because of that? Mumkin ila rakhtinikh min ala? Is it possible we walk away? Would some people walk away from, from Jesus and become either atheist or they go and follow a different religion because of that? Is it? Okay. Okay. It wasn't possible. So it's possible. I really don't think they've known him. Like, there's no way you truly know him and belong to him and go yeah. somewhere else. Beautiful. She just answered me. Why? Because if you have that relationship, if you are in the way, if you know the way, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ didn't say, I will show you the way. I will tell you the truth. He said, I am the way. Amen. So for you to know the way is to know Jesus Christ. For you to find the ways to know Jesus Christ, you need to know Him first. Once you know Jesus Christ, there's no way out. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So her answer was proper. Why? They didn't know Jesus Christ. But what is He telling you? Listen to what He's telling you. Have you been with me as long as the apostles been with me? Because watch, none of the apostles left Him. Because they spent three years with Him. Have you been three years with him? So if you know the way, and you know the truth, and you know the life, you will never leave him. Because you spend enough time with Jesus. They were a family. They with Jesus Christ, they ate with Jesus Christ, they slept with Jesus Christ, they walked with Jesus Christ. See? And that is what you need to do. So you don't leave Jesus Christ. Jesus will never leave you, just so you can keep this in mind. I will Jesus never forsake, forsake you. you. Yes. Mahlan 